everyone knows someone whose life has been changed or ended by heart disease. It's the number one killer in the United States today. But someday that will change because there is hope for the future. It's called the Hope Heart Institute. The search for a cure continues at an accelerated pace. The Hope is rapidly gaining international recognition as a major education and research institute. Today, the Hope is on the move, adding prominent scientists whose work in cell, molecular, and vascular biology is focused on a common goal, to learn more, to do more, to treat and prevent the number one cause of death in the Western world. Each department is working on something a little bit different, but they're all interested in how cells communicate with the extracellular environment and how they communicate with each other. And the idea is, how do we grow new blood vessels? So angiogenesis. Dr. Helene Sage and her team are known internationally for their pioneering work studying angiogenesis, the growth or creation of new blood vessels. A person has a myocardial infarction. What does that mean? It means, as a consequence, that blood vessel supply might be compromised in the heart. So we study angiogenesis and how we can actually make blood vessels grow in an injured area. Dr. Thomas White is an internationally respected cell biologist. While Dr. Sage and her team study blood vessel growth, Tom White is creating artificial vessels in the lab. We're actually taking the cells that make up blood vessels and causing them to grow in a tissue culture environment. And with the, with the appropriate expression of particular genes uh, that are responsible for the development of these blood vessels, we can enhance their tube forming capacity, eventually creating an actual tube that can then be further manipulated into a, a, a mature blood vessel to be used in a, in a graft repair situation. Someday, a diseased heart might not be replaced with a transplant organ or an artificial device. The Hope, in conjunction with the University of Washington and private industry, wants to produce what's been called a living heart. Dr. Robert Vernon is one of the lead scientists. I guess I would say that the work is, is, is revolutionary. It's a revolutionary way of thinking. What we're attempting to do is actually build a fu complete functional organ with a variety of different cell types uh, interacting together Unlike the, the Jarvik style hearts that were designed years ago, making the, the structure from the patient's own cells will eliminate the potential for rejection. It's a current problem uh, in conventional heart transplant techniques used today. In most research centers, scientists working on major projects such as this can spend years in the lab and never see the benefit to the patient. One of the, the real dreams of a basic scientist, the person who does basic science, is to eventually be able to take discovery uh, from the basic science lab uh, into the clinic, uh, into a situation where we can actually have an impact on, on, on disease and patient health. We really hope to advance uh, in small steps uh, the clinical boundaries, both in prevention and treatment of heart disease. Dr. Thomas Amidon oversees the HOPE's clinical research program. The clinical research is important because we are advancing uh, technologies and medications for preventing and treating heart disease. Nearly 30 full-time cardiologists are involved in the program. The clinical studies they conduct in their private practices take the scientists' discoveries to the patients. We've got studies looking at the prevention of heart disease, primarily in patients with risk factors. In particular, we're looking at new ways of treating diabetics to prevent heart disease, and we're looking at new treatments for cholesterol abnormalities, both to lower bad cholesterol and raise good cholesterol. All of the studies that we're involved with started in the lab. For instance, we are now routinely using stents to open coronary arteries that are coated with a drug that prevents the stent from re-narrowing in the future. All of that originated as basic science bench research and then finally human studies. Similarly, every drug that we test, whether it's to prevent heart disease or to treat heart disease, started out in the lab. I think the reason that all of us that are members of the HOPE 
uh, are involved is that it gives us a tremendous sense of satisfaction to know that we're participating in the advancement of medicine. We've come a long way in the 20 years since I graduated from medical school in the techniques that we have for treating heart disease, yet heart disease still remains the number one killer in this country, so we have a long way to go. We recognize that that our participation uh, helps in a small way to advance uh, the treatment and prevention of heart disease. Though heart disease is the number one cause of death in the U.S., much of the disease is preventable. The HOPE produces a number of publications including the HOPE Health Newsletter, the world's most widely read health publication, reaching more than one million people each month. The HOPE is comprehensive in its approach to eradicating heart disease and therefore in addition to our basic science and our clinical research components, the HOPE also dedicates a major portion of our energy to prevention, education and outreach. Who can raise your hand and tell me what this is? In our elementary school curriculum is called Kids Take Heart and it essentially turns kids inside out using a giant circulatory mat to explore basic anatomy of the heart, nutrition, exercise and goal setting coupled with stress management. All of the curriculum pieces align with the Superintendent of Public Instruction's essential learning requirements, so we're also helping to meet state standards at the same time as providing hands-on curriculum. For older students, Youth Take Heart and Teen Take Heart are our middle school and high school curriculums that take a more scientific approach to heart anatomy and the eradication of heart disease, while also continuing the focus of nutrition and exercise and the importance that those have on our overall health. Welcome to the Pacific Science Center. The HOPE relies on a number of partnerships to really make our education programs run smoothly, including the University of Washington and Mesa. And recently, we've also partnered with the Seattle Pacific Science Center to uh, entertain and educate both young and old alike to the science that lies behind the heart. We're here tonight because we know that education plays a very major role for adults, our main community outreach piece is Women Take Heart. It was really born out of the discovery that a lot of women were unaware that heart disease is their number one killer. And when you couple that with the fact that heart attack symptoms are different for men and women, we saw a need. So we put together a free community program that's really a condensed, hands-on approach to giving prevention tools to women and their families. Much of heart disease is preventable, and that's why our education programs and all prevention is so important. I really think a little girl in one of the Kids Take Heart curriculums summed it up best when at the end of the program, the education coordinator said, now, why do you think it's so important to us that you live a long life? And she said, without hesitation, with a high raised hand, because we can make a difference. And that's what the hope is all about. The Institute has come a long way since it began more than 40 years ago in a turn-of-the-century house next to Seattle's old Providence Hospital. This is where HOPE founder Dr. Lester Savage and his team pioneered coronary bypass surgery and developed artificial arteries used throughout the world, bringing a major change to the treatment of heart disease. Today, change continues as scientists, doctors, and educators search for the discoveries that will revolutionize treatment and prevention. What you really want is to keep people out of the operating room, not to have them in the operating room because what you want is to keep patients healthy in the beginning and this should be our primary mission is to keep people from becoming patients in the first place.